Welcome back to uh, uh, NE 630 Engineering and uh, Nuclear Reactor Theory. This is the last lecture of the semester and we will just go uh, very quickly over the different types of nuclear reactors. So hopefully this will be a fun lecture. Um, so as you will see here, we'll be talking about the different types of nuclear uh, reactors. <coughs> so before proceeding on the different types, let's talk a little bit about the first uh, reactor. So the first reactor was just a natural um, uh, reactor. It's not man-made and it was discovered, it was on operation something like uh, 1.5 million years ago. It was, it was discovered in Oklo in, uh, in uh, Gabon and it was uh, natural uranium underground was set critical by strain neutrons. At, at this time of the early uh, uh, early time of the earth, uh, the, the natural uranium, uh, the uranium-238 and the uranium-235, the percentage was not the 99.3 and 0.7 percent. The uranium-235 percentage was higher and what happened is this sets off a sustaining nuclear reaction using the rain water as a moderator and, and stray neutron from cosmic rays to set up this uh, nuclear reactor. So the nuclear reactor uh, when the temperature increases, this will work as a negative feedback coefficient that will shut down the reactor once it cools, cools off, it will start on again until you burn it all the, um, uh, let's say, burn it much of the uranium-235 that makes the reactor uh, not operable with natural uranium, so, and it stayed at this, at this limit. So what happened is this factor was discovered in the French uh, Atomic Energy Authority where some French engineers were just were uh, checking some uranium batches from different sites uh, in, in coming from a Africa and they noticed that the uranium concentration for 235 was a little bit different from the rest of the uh, world and also uh, the subsequent investigation indicated the presence of long-lived fission products inside the ore and this was a little bit confusing. So um, uh, this was known as uh, the first human man-made, man a human-made uh, uh, nuclear nuclear reactor. This is before the first human made, made reactor was known, so this is a uh, very long time ago. Uh, then we will go to generation zero nuclear reactor. Of course, the first reactor, uh, test reactor as you, as you know, or experimental or, or facility as you know, is the Manhattan Project. And this was established in, 19, in 1941, and it was named uh, Chicago Pile 1, CP1, and it was built in the, um, in the, under the uh, stage of the uh, football field in, in uh, University of Chicago uh, or in Chicago. It uses graphite as moderator and the control rod was just held by a, by a rope. So somebody is, is pulling the rope to control the uh, reactor power and so on. So this controlled fission was achieved in December uh, 2nd, 1994, 1942 and uh, it went critical under the leadership of en Enrico Fermi and as you see here Enrico Fermi was a couple of his uh, co-scientists uh, they were working on the uh, first one so then came later the, the weapon reactors the X-10 reactor was built in Oak Ridge in 1943 and the B reactor was built in Hanford in Washington state to produce quantities of weapon grade plutonium and this is based on the CP1 reactor design which uses graphite as a moderator. The X10 was air cold while the B uh, reactor was water cold. Uh, those reactors were built to produce plutonium 239 and we knew that plutonium 239 is a nuclear uh, fissile material. Uh, it, it came from this nuclear reaction, neutron plus uranium 238. It will give you a uranium compound nucleus that will uh, have a double beta decay. Uh, uh, going to niobium and then plutonium to 30, uh, 239. So um, um, afterwards, the United States, after it, it started its nuclear nuclear reactor program, the United Kingdom, among other countries, decided to build their own uh, atomic um, atomic weapon facilities, producing facilities. So they built, at the same time, they built two graphite moderated air cooled reactors. Uh, one is called Wind Scale Pile 1 and Wind Scale Pile 2. This w was around 1957. And as you see here, this is the reactor core, and you have some 
fan that will blow air and the air will come here and there's a filter to retain all the radioactive uh, uh, influence coming from the reactor core or, or um, so uh, this was followed just by the generation one reactors and uh, the first generation for elect electricity production uh, and uh, uh, population reactors so we will see here that the uh, the first man made a nuclear reactor for uh, electricity production usually here people they, they are not aware that they, they usually said that the first reactor is the shipping boards and this is this was not true the first reactor was built in Russia and the majority of the students and also the professor do not know this fact so this is the first civilian power reactor or power station in the world and it was built in uh, Obninesk nuclear power station APS-1 uh, it was about 100 kilometer, 110 kilometers southwest of Moscow and it was owned by Rose Atom State Corporation uh, the construction started in 1951 uh, they started up the, the uh, station in 1954 and then it was great commissioned in 26 of June 1954 it was decommissioned in April of 2002 it was a graphite moderator, so it's, I think it's something like, what, 50 years? So it was graphite moderated and water cooled. Uh, it has a total power of 6 megawatts, just 6 megawatts of uh, electrical power and 30 megawatts of, uh, of uh, thermal power. So if you divide 6 by 30, this will give you one-fifth. So this is a 20% efficiency for the... Uh, here is the picture for the uh, first uh, power power planet ever built in the earth um, so then the shipping board reactor was first the first full-scale nuclear power reactor to be built to produce electricity again it was located in Ohio River in uh, Beaver County in, in Pennsylvania uh, it was pressurized water reactor the, the reactor first went critical in 2nd of December 1957 and it was 15 years after the Chicago Bile 1 and uh, it was operated until 1982 so if you see just the the discrepancy here this is something like what uh, uh, five uh, so 25 years the other one last double double the time so 50 years the reactor power was 60 megawatts and it was built for both electric production uh, but also as a test reactor for nuclear propulsion uh, <coughs> it was followed by a couple of uh, reactor designs were considered to build including many based on uh, uh, carbon dioxide as the coolant among those are the Magnus reactor in, in, in uh, United Kingdom and the various gas cooled reactors which are a transition from generation one to the generation two so <coughs> 52 of those reactors were built in the United States and other countries and this is a picture here of the Magnus Magnox reactor at uh, Wilfa in, in uh, United Kingdom as you see this is the reactor <coughs> and um, as you see the fuel and the moderator in between and then there is a gas um, pump here that pumps the gas inside the reactor uh, core and then the gas takes the heat or remove the heat from the fuel elements take the heat to an external steam generator where you have a water coming on and then the water will turn to a steam that will turn uh, turbine <coughs> so the generation two reactors this is the current generation of power reactors and this generation um, um, re reactors of those generations are the um, vast array of over 100 reactors now operating around the world to produce electricity and we can literally uh, categorize those uh, reactors up to the type of uh, uh, moderator so you can you can uh, modify um, uh, uh, you can ca categorize those to light water reactors and uh, uh, heavy water reactors and the light water reactor and heavy water reactor there is a sub division uh, based on whether you allow the temperature to to boil inside the reactor or not so if you allow the temperature to boil inside your reactor it will be called boiling water reactor you do not allow the, the water to boil inside your reactor it will be uh, named pressurized water reactor <coughs> and the same is true for the heavy water which is represented here by the can do type reactor then you have the advanced 
gas cold reactor and there is molten salt reactor and so on so you can classify your power planet according to the moderator you can uh, classify uh, the coolant sorry you can classify them according to the moderator for example if you will use a moderator so th th those will be called thermal reactors if you will not use a moderator those will be called uh, fast reactors and again there is lots of uh, uh, categorization for those nuclear reactors here so <coughs> one of the gen gen 2 uh, power reactor is uh, the majority here in worldwide and also in the, the in, 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 in I think the United States is, is more inclined toward the the boiling I think so worldwide the majority of those are gen 2 and they are pressurized water reactors so um, uh, these reactors use uh, use pressure in order to avoid water boiling within the reactor itself so in order to not let the, the temperature the sorry the water uh, uh, boiling you have to pressurize it up to 150 bar or so so that you keep it under under pressure and the leading company worldwide in this business is Westinghouse and I knew that Westinghouse now they have a alliance with uh, I don't remember maybe a Japanese company I knew that General Electric was Toshiba but I do not remember Westinghouse or maybe Toshiba is with, with Westinghouse and another company also Japanese was General Electric so uh, General Westinghouse is the major supplier for those types of reactors and this reactor types is used now both for electric power generation and for propulsion in the Navy. Uh, if, if, if you will see the, uh, the uh, cartoon here, you will notice that uh, this is the pressure vessel here, uh, or the, not, the, uh, not the pressure vessel, this is the, the containment. And as you see here, this is the reactor, reactor pressure vessel. Inside the reactor pressure vessel, you will see that there is a pressurizer, a pressurizer to stabilize the pressure inside the nuclear reactor and there is a primary pump. This lobe here uh, represented by the uh, orange and red colors is called the primary lobe and the water will, will get in under pressure, will take the heat, will, will be heated up and then will go inside a steam generator where you will have water pumped inside the steam generator and then it will be turned to a steam and this steam will turn a turbine and this turbine will run a generator that will produce electricity uh, that you use to connect to the grid and again the, condens the condenser which is the secondary loop here is connected to a third loop and usually this, th this third loop might be with either a uh, water coming from a large reservoir of, of water like a uh, 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 sea or a big river or something like this or it's a big uh, uh, parabolic shape uh, uh, cooling towers there's a huge parabolic shape cooling towers that that will uh, take this uh, this uh, functionality here so the uh, boiling water reactors were developed by General Electric and Idaho National Laboratory in the mid 50s and those reactors usually allow two phases usually liquid and gas in this case the gas is a steam uh, uh, to flow in the primary coolant lobe. These reactors usually operate at low pressure uh, compared to the uh, pressurized water reactor, although it's not atmospheric, of course. It's a couple of, let's say, a couple of tens maybe, of, or up, up to a 90 or something like this, 90 bar. Uh, so the pressure is lower, but it's not, uh, it's not uh, atmospheric. And this to eliminate the need for a steam, gen a steam generator. And thus, uh, you eliminate completely the second lo uh, secondary uh, cool, uh, uh, coolant loop. The problem for those those reactors is because the water coming out or the steam coming out from the uh, primary loop is intact with the fuel elements, it came radioactive. So you have to encapsulate, encapsulate the uh, turbine, you have to encapsulate the steam generator, you have to encapsulate pretty much the secondary, all the secondary loop inside uh, the containment of the reactor containment so that you will, will minimize the radiation coming out of course the if you look at this uh, this picture here it's not true because all those components must be inside the containment also so that you will or or should be in a in a shielded a shielded location so that you will minimize the uh, radiation coming again the water will get in um, it will be uh, uh, heated uh, converted to steam and the steam will turn the, run the turbine, the turbine will run the generator and then the steam 
will become a low grade steam or, or low pressure steam and the low pressure steam from high pressure will reduce drop to low pressure once it drops to the low pressure it will get into the condenser where it will condense because of the uh, 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 exposure to the, uh, the uh, water here, the cold water from the uh, uh, secondary side. Uh, the control rods here usually are, are, um, are, are from the, uh, the lower part of the reactor. Can somebody tell me why? Yeah, so the steam is, is in the top of the reactor and the void reactivity coefficient is, is, is there is bore, bore activity in, in because of the void itself. So why? Because in, in the void, the neutrons, well, the density, the atom density will be very low. So the neutrons will not thermalize very, very good in void and this will reduce the reactivity for the reactor. So usually you put your what? You put your control rods from the lower, the lower position, for example. So uh, in the in the on the opposite side, the control rods are from where? From the top. So with with any accidents, with the gravity, you lose what? You lose power. They will drop automatically. Okay. The opposite in the other in the other case. So they will be ejected inside the core from the lower position. They will be ejected from the inside the core by a compressed, compressed, uh, compressed gas in case of emergency. Uh, uh, the Kandu type uh, reactor is, is just a chromium for Canada, uh, deuterium, uranium, and those types of reactors usually are pressurized water reactors. They were developed in uh, uh, Atomic Energy of Canada Limited, and all current power reactors in Canada um, are of Kandu type, and, and they are marketed outside the, the Canada. They use heavy water as a moderator, which has advantage that it can operate with natural uranium fuel because the neutron capture is much smaller in the deuterium compared to the hydrogen. And we knew that uh, this will at contribute to what? To increasing F, the thermal utilization, if you remember. And however, it requires a large amount of heavy water reactor because the uh, scattering power of the uh, of the deuterium is lower than the scattering power of the uh, light water. Um, again, um, this is a, a, a cartoon drawing for a heavy water reactor. And again, the, usually the heavy, in, in the heavy water reactor, you have two separate loops. One that you will put your fuel bundles inside the pressure, a pressure uh, tubes. And this pressure tube is inserted inside a very large tank. And it's called calandria. So inside the, inside the uh, pressure loops, uh, usually you use for, for, uh, for uh, uh, heavy water for, uh, for moderation. And the big tank here is the calandria where it, it's, it's a very huge. And it is usually uh, horizontally aligned. It's not vertical reactor like the rest of the reactors. So uh, it is horizontally aligned and you, usually you have the fuel in those uh, pressure tubes, you have a heavy water inside the calandria and a light water for cooling inside the uh, pressure tubes. So the, the, the volume of this uh, light water is very small compared to the very large amount of heavy water, so it does not contribute a lot to the absorption. And usually this, this reactor, the water will get in, will heat it, will be heated, and then will get into the steam generator where you will produce steam and the steam will run the turbine. Uh, for this, types of reactor, uh, you can refuel the fuel uh, online. So you will have online refueling machines that will come in one of those pressure tubes isolated from the rest of the reactor while it's running. And then you will push using a robot, you will push the fuel until you take off the fuel element or fuel bundle that you want to replace. And you will replace it and insert the rest of it again. And, and this is on uh, online, they call it online, online refueling. So it's not feasible in the pressurized or uh, uh, boiling water reactor versions. Um, again, for the generation two advanced gas cooled reactor, those, this is another type of the ad, ad generation two reactors. The design usually uses slightly enriched uranium for fuel and uh, the graphite as the moderator and the CO2 as the coolant. The advantage of, this, of those types of reactors 
they operate usually at higher temperature, so they will have better thermal uh, efficiency. Usually, the thermal efficiency runs about uh, 40 something, 41, 42 percent. So, by the way, one of our our president mm, long time ago, I remember he was asking the uh, the, the Minister of Energy or, or Electricity, and they were uh, opening a new, inaugurating a new, a new power planet, and um, he asked, he, he's just making a demonstration, and he said, Mr. President, we have a very good uh, engineering group who designed this uh, power planet, and, and we achieved, it was a fossil fuel, we achieved 48% uh, percent efficiency. Then the President looked at him and said, why not 100%? And he looked at him and said, yes, sir, we will make it 100% next time. <laughs> so this is how to know that uh, usually politician, politician and scientists are completely separated. You cannot say to the, your president, you are wrong, you are an idiot, you do not know anything about engineering. You will say, yes, sir, we will make it next time, violate the thermodynamic laws. So this is very nice. So um, again, we will, we will get into the... Uh, generation three reactors. Again, those those types of reactor for the gas cooled, uh, you, 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 there is no worry about boiling because the coolant is all, all already in a gas gas phase, so there is no need. And usually, it has lots of uh, lots of advantage if you work at higher temperature. Usually, for generation three, as we will see here, they use it for hydrogen generation and they use it for uh, water desalination and so on. So uh, now we will jump to generation. Uh, three uh, reactors, and those are the next generation of power reactors. Um, usually, those uh, reactors are based on the installed capacity of the 100 plus uh, generation two reactors. They are evolutionary designs that improve on the generation two concepts, so uh, they pretty much incorporate the passive safety features. Can somebody tell me what's the difference between passive and active safety? Feature. You have to work to keep the reactivity positive. Nope. Reactor. Nope. You don't have to do anything in the passive cool system? So the passive systems, usually you do not have any power given to the, uh, the reactor. So there is no electric power, for example, for, the, uh, for the, active, the active system, you have to supply power. Like, for example, anything that needs power, like what? Pumps, turbine. Turbine does not pump, for example. Uh, anything that requires power, this is called active system. Anything that does not require power and it, it, it uses natural phenomena is a passive, system, passive safety system. And usually, uh, for example, if, if, if for example the, you have something like a core immersion system, that you have a tank somewhere in the top of the reactor, above the reactor, for example, in a second floor or something like this, and when you lose electricity, the valve will, will fail safe, will fail open. So when the valve will fail, it will open. So what will happen, all the water will, will come from the tank using the gravity and will, will, will uh, over flood the reactor, for example, reactor core. Mm -hmm. So something like this is based on a passive, a passive system. There is no there is no power needed. So in case of loss of, loss of power, you do not have to, uh, to worry about anything. What happened in Fukushima, for example, is you have in the nuclear power planet, usually you have two power systems, or two main systems. One is the power supplied to the power station from outside, and this is called off-site power supply. And you have the power supplied to the station from inside, and this is the diesel, diesel generators, the battery system, and so on. And those are called inside power supply. When you lose the off-site power supply, usually you engage the inside power supply so that you will keep your turb uh, pumps running so that the residual heat uh, after the uh, uh, shutdown of the reactor, it, it, it contributes to 8 to 10 percent of the total power. So if you have a thermal power, of let's say 3,000 1,000 megawatt power power planet, for example, will be around 4,000 megawatt thermal. So 10 percent of this is 400 megawatt, which is huge amount of power you need to 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 take away after the shutdown of the reactor. So you need to keep your uh, cooling cooling pumps running 
so that you will take off this heat and it will take I do not remember how many hours to, to remove those uh, power from the reactor. This is just the decay heat. So uh, if you lose both the off-site and the on-site, this is called station blackout. And this is the disaster. This is what happened in Fukushima. So when the earthquake happened, all the off-site power supply were lost because, because all, all there is lots of power generating facilities that, that uh, deliver power to the grid completely when they sense any earthquake they will shut down completely so one, once you have the off-site power supply is off they try to run what? Diesel. the diesel engine but the diesel uses diesel which is fuel so when the tsunami come it completely over flood the tanks and, and destroy the, the, uh, the fuel for the diesels and so on so now you, 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 uh, the, the, the batteries will work just for a couple of minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes, and that's it. So they were not enough. So as a result of this, what happened is you lost everything. Water starts heating up inside the reactors. Then you, will, you, have, you have increase of pressure inside. When the pressure increases, temperature increases, water will interact with the zirconium alloy and will produce hydrogen. If, if, if you try to release the hydrogen to the containment to relieve the pressure, sometimes you will get explosion because of the interaction of hydrogen with oxygen and so on. This is a disaster. So for generation three, usually the majority of the, the design is based on uh, passive system, not active system. And usually those systems, usually in, in safety, if you take a course in safety analysis, usually we call um, fail safe systems. So it will fail safe. It will, not, it will not fail and give you a disaster. So those types of, again, for reactor incorporate the passive safety features. They will retain concepts of no reprocessing. And this is a legacy from Carter uh, administration. Nowadays, they are thinking about uh, reprocessing the fuel in order to eliminate um, lots of problems. One of those is to uh, make use of the um, plutonium inside the fuel and also the uranium, the non-fissioned uranium-235 and also to use the uh, transurenic or actinides so that you will use it in the fuel again to burn it in, in, in actinide burners so that you will reduce their half-lives to uh, uh, intermediate lives instead of the billions of years and so on. So uh, they are modular in, in concept, usually they um, uh, uh, this is the characteristics of those reactors. So the generation three reactors, the design will, will usually include the general electric advanced boiling water reactor. So a, ABWR is the uh, advanced boiling water reactor by general electric. You have the combustion engineering system, AT plus, and now it's incorporated into uh, Westinghouse pressurized water reactor. Westinghouse has two leading reactors in generation three. One is AP 600 and AP 1000, it's advanced pressurized 600, advanced pressurized 1000, pressurized water reactor. You have evolutionary power reactor, EPR, and this is uh, a European design. You have the advanced can do reactor, ACR 700, advanced can do reactor 700. You have the international reactor innovation and, and secure, IRIS, GE. Uh, economic and simplified uh, boiling water reactors. You have from GE, you have two types: advanced boiling water reactor and uh, <coughs> economic simplified boiling water reactor. And from Westinghouse, you have the AP 600 and AP 1000. So those, uh, the if we look at the advanced boiling water reactor, this reactor concept envisions uh, uh, 1400 almost megawatt electrical and it has forced circulation, it has mixed oxide. So instead of just using uranium-235, you use plutonium, uh, plutonium oxide and, and uranium oxide. And, and uh, there is advantages for using a mixed oxide fuel. So uh, those types of reactors, usually they are ev evolutionary designed by GE and Hitachi. So this is the Hitachi, Toshiba, and GE are the three alliance that uh, uh, design this boiling water reactor. They have dig digital logic and control. Usually the, the um, um, control rooms uh, currently in, 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 um, 
in nuclear power plant they utilize the analog systems. So if you want a better control and a better uh, instrumentation, you have to move to or trans and transit to the advanced uh, control system based on the digital electronics. So this is this is those types of reactor will utilize digital logic and control. They have improved uh, electronics, fuel and, and turbine technology. Two of those advanced boiling water reactors, each are uh, currently working in Japan and Taiwan, and there is a, a very good enhancement in construction. So usually those power planets, usually when you when you construct them, it will take between anywhere between five, six, up to ten years. Depends on the the cash flows going to the project and and the political issues and so on. So this will take a record construction time of up to two years or minimum two years and it is approved for US by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So um, this is uh, here uh, the advanced boiling water reactor. And as you see here you have a reactor internal internal pumps. They they incorporated the pump inside inside the, uh, uh, the pressure let's say pressure container. You have reinforced concrete containment vessel. The uh, reactor pressure vessel is what you see here. Those are the fuel elements and the control, control rods. They will have a fine motion control rod drive and you have a horizontal vents um, here and, and where, where you will have a, in any case of I think if, of, of uh, overflow. I, not, I do not remember why, why the, use, the usage of this. And then the steam will come out. You have a high pressure turbine. Then you have a moisture separator and reheat. So you will take some of the moisture to reheat again the, uh, the uh, steam again and you will send it to a low pressure turbine and this will increase the efficiency by the way. And then you will send it to the generator and uh, the low pressure uh, uh, steam will come to the condenser and again back to, back to the reactor itself. So um, uh, the system 80 plus uh, pressurized water reactor, this is revolutionary design by combustion engineering and uh, ASEA Brown Bovary. Brown Bovary is a company in Germany, but it was acquired by Washington, Westinghouse uh, BNF, but later acquired by Framatome in, uh, in uh, France. It has a dual spherical steel confinement, uh, a cavity flooding system, and in containment refueling water supply. There is eight units of this reactor in Korea but unlikely to be built in the United States and it evolved into the advanced pressurized reactor 1400 for use in, 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 uh, in Korea. AP600 and AP1000 power reactor, they are designed by Westinghouse, passive core cooling system. So they have again passive core cooling system. Um, there is no need for electrical power at all. Um, the, the valves powered by stored energy instead of just uh, electric power. So um, you have batteries, you have springs, you have compressed gas. So for example, when you want to open the valve, there is a spring that just remove a, a, a latch and the, the, the spring, spring force will, will open it or whatever. 50% fewer valves, less control cable, fewer pumps, reduced planet cost and construction schedule. It can use mixed oxide and there is again advantages of using mixed oxide from the neutronics point of view. It received the final design approval from the NRC in 2005 and there is four AP1000 units under construction in China. And by the way, I attended one of those uh, uh, fast breeder reactor course development in Argo National Lab. <coughs> they discussed that uh, uh, United States, they, they closed their uh, fast breeder technology because there is no much manpower working and there is no plan that they will build any commercial fast breeder but China is, is, is moving very fast in everywhere in all directions so they are building a crazy all types of reactors from all vendors so this is just to show you four, just four types from the AP1000 in China and there is Fast breeder, which is scheduled to, I think, to inaugurate something like next year or the, year, the following year. So they have very strong program right now in in, uh, in nuclear uh, engineering. <coughs> this is, as you see here, 
This is the um, uh, uh, reactor core and this is the pressurizer as you see before. And again, those are the natural, uh, there is natural convection air here, air discharge, and those are the tanks that I talked talk to you about that you, when, when there is any accident or whatever, if you want to cool down the, uh, the containment, just spray air, uh, spray water from those tanks on the top of this uh, <coughs> uh, containment and there is uh, um, outside cooling air intake that, that, that will do something like maybe natural circulation. This is a steel containment uh, which is separating the reactor hole here from the, the outside containment. So the European uh, pressurized water reactor, EBR, is now designed and develop, developed mainly by Arriva and EDF in France and Simmons in, in Germany. This reactor design was called in Europe the European Pressurized Water Reactor, but uh, the internationalized name is now the Evolutionary Power Reactor uh, or, or EPR. Two units are being built, uh, one in Sweden and one in France. Uh, the US EPR planets uh, uh, blend in, in, uh, in US. Uh, the mod modernized pressurized water reactors four and a half year construction cycle usually. If you compare the um, APR 1000 and APR, these are just the parameters of comparison. The power is usually comparable. This is the thermal power, this is the electric power. Um, as you see here, this is twice, twice as, as this is twice as this. So you have a almost 50% which is a record, a record efficiency for a nuclear power planet. Uh, <coughs> so number of lobes, uh, the hot leg temperature, hot leg is the temperature, the highest temperature coming out from the reactor core. This is called hot leg. There is the cold leg, and the cold leg will be the temperature of the water getting into the reactor core, for example. So the highest temperature is 321, the number of fuel bundles, the type of fuel assembly, the active fuel heights, four meter almost, the linear heat rates, what per centimeter, this is 187, the control rod cluster assembly, the reactor vessel inside, the diameter of the reactor vessel is almost four meters here and here are five meter, the vessel flow meter cube per hour is 68,000 uh, cubic meter per hour and this is double almost. Uh, so this is the ACR. 700 and this is evolved earlier from earlier can do it's a modular modular 700 megawatts uh, uh, thermal and again the digital control can be refilled or fuel <coughs> bundle shuffle during the operation to even uh, fuel burn up and again this is the calendria here and those are the pressure tubes and those are the fueling refueling machine that you assign or shift to where the pressure tube is and then you push those are the fuel bundles here so you can push the fuel bundle until you take the one that you want to replace and then insert the other one and the refueling will be done automatically online refueling again. Uh, this is the IRIS design and uh, this design uh, team uh, headed by Westinghouse uh, it is a very small uh, power 50 to 350 modular, modular uh, megawatt electric reactors. They are based on a pressurized water reactor technology, five to eight uh, year co core reload, which is very long. If you look at the, usually the normal, uh, the, the, the refueling time, I think it was 18 months to two years for power. I don't know if, I think this is the reload. So maybe this is the refueling. So the vessel, the vessel usually will contain, as you see here, a spherical vessel here. This is the reactor itself, and it will contain the core, uh, the pressurizer, and the steam generators. So the pressurizer and the steam generator, and a small containment uh, size. This is the <coughs> gas turbine modular helium reactor, GT MHR. It's ultra safe, uh, meltdown proof helium cooled, the efficiency is around 47.5%. It's designed by consortium between General Atomics, France, and Fuji in Japan. Uh, and uh, Fuji developing for use in Russia. 
to destroy it was mainly to destroy the weapon grade plutonium so that you can use the weapon grade plutonium as the fuel for this reactor to get rid of this uh, stock of, of plutonium from Russia or for, from the old Soviet Union uh, countries can, can use uranium and or plutonium as a fuel again uh, this is the detail of the reactor economic and simplified boiling water reactor it's again passive safety designed by General Electric around 1400 megawatt electric with natural circulation gravity driven emergency core cooling system so your emergency core cooling system will be uh, driven by by gravity so there is there is no need for any electric power intervention in this case simplified piping no coal and bumps and standby diesel generators design approved by the US NRC certification will be soon so this is again the design I, I have to go this is the bevel bed this is generation 3 plus <coughs> and this is the bevel bed modular reactor is ahead of other generation 4 reactors and so on uh, so can be considered as late generation 3 reactor or an early generation 4 reactor um, it is generation 4 in that it employs an entirely new design concept the encapsulation of fuel in a small spheres and this is why they call it bevel so you do not have the fuel in a in a fuel rods format you have it in a in a uh, the fuel will be like um, I want to tell you do you know the candy where you buy it from the any grocery store where you have it in a spherical in shape sometimes you have some uh, chocolates or whatever inside or or maybe some nuts inside so it's exactly the same so the, the fuel will be like the nuts inside and the surrounding candy will be the moderator in this case the graphite or or whatever so this is so this is <coughs> uh, I think the fuel is, is small spheres pebbles which serve as the containment and circulation of this bubble through the core and usually the, 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 the coolant will be a gas and the beauty of this fuel, fuel is the gas will go everywhere around the coolant will go everywhere around the, around the fuel itself so it is a generation 3 in, in the sense that it is approved for construction in South, in South Africa so this is here what you see here again um, there is a, the fuel kernel here it's a half millimeter and then you have a borus carbon buffer followed by inner uh, pyro pyrolytic coating and, and then followed by silicon carbide barrier coating and then again the pyrolytic coating so you can search the internet for the details um, the MIT modular then generation 4 but I do not have time to uh, to give you anything about generation 4 so there is if you search gen 4 nuclear reactors there is a complete site about Gen 4 reactors and wha what are the, the reactors design and, and everything like this. So uh, thank you so, so, so much for your uh, listening and uh, best of luck in your uh, exam and have a wonderful time guys and see you in the near future. Yes? I was wondering if you could put the uh, solutions to the midterm online. The midterm? Solutions. I cannot put the midterm. I can't put the midterm. I already, I already, I already solved the midterm.